Michelle, uh, Dr. Naiman, uh, one thing that uh, I wanted to bring up, and for those that are have been listening to the podcast for a long time, may have already listened to it, but if you are curious, the previous episodes were episode 20, so one of the early ones, then 181, and I think it was 181 where we talked a little bit about your PE diet in that book when, when that first kind of came out, and that would have been episode 181, the more recent one. You want to just share with our listeners, though, who haven't listened to that episode or haven't followed you, just kind of what your what the idea is behind the PE diet and how that maybe kind of fits fits within what kind of Michelle is talking about. Oh yeah, sure, absolutely. So, <clears throat> like, really, really big picture for me, if you zoom out and you you know you look at you know a hundred thousand years ago or something, humans were hunter gatherers. You just went out and you killed an animal and you ate the whole thing, and you're getting enough protein and minerals and nutrients, but you're basically starving for energy. So, you know, as hunter gatherers, we were constantly looking for ways to add energy to our diet, anything at all. Like you just, you did not get enough energy. So we invented all sorts of technologies to add energy to our diet. You know, we um, stone tools to break open skulls and long bones and eat brains and marrow. And we figured out how to dig up tubers and we figured out how to harvest honey and we're just constantly looking for ways to add more energy to our diet and then we invented agriculture we domesticated animals to make them fatter and we figured out how to melt cows and we figured out you know which siphons a whole bunch of energy off the animal carbs and fats and we grew all these grains and we started growing all these plant foods and it was all just about adding more and more energy carbs or fats didn't matter both if possible um, then you get the industrial revolution and the bulk refining of sugar and flour and oil. And now we can just suck the pure energy out of any of these plant or animal foods. So we've made all our plants a uh, higher energy yield. Um, we've made all our animals higher energy yield. We've extracted all the chemical energy out of them. And now we've diluted the whole human food supply with all of these refined carbs and these refined fats. And we've literally created the exact opposite problem where it's all just carbs and fats. Like we've massively diluted out protein and minerals in the human food supply. Protein's down to like 12 and a half percent of calories in, in the America versus, you know, 33% on average in worldwide hunter gatherer macro estimates. So we have this massive dilution of protein with refined carbs and refined fats. And it's economic as well, where protein is the most expensive macronutrient by a mile and carbs or fats are almost free. You know, you supersize your McDonald's meal and you get all the soda and fries you can stand for like, nut. it's almost free. It's the, so now we have the exact, exact opposite problem. And for me, the way you start out is you just flip that around. And you just target the hell out of protein. So every meal centered around protein, every snack centered around protein, you're basically eating protein because it is so criminally easy to add carbs and fat to any protein in our society. You just, you know, you cook something in butter, you cook it in oil, you add a sauce, you, uh, you know, it's just like adding carbs and fat, any kind of side dish, carbs, fat, any kind of garnish any kind of cooking style like you're just adding carbs and fat it's it's just like a no-brainer to dump carbs and fats into anybody's diet and so because it's so protein diluted with carbs and fats and because it's so easy to add carbs and fats you really have to go the exact opposite direction hard and just target the hell out of protein every time you eat because those carbs and fats are easy to add and they're probably already added and you're literally going to have a hard time unadding them. Like nobody's just adding protein to anything. Um, but adding carbs and fats is easy. You know, you put dressing on your salad, you throw in some croutons. It's like, yeah, it's just so easy. So for the whole point of the PE diet is targeting the heck out of protein and trying to prioritize protein over non-protein energy, carbs and fats. So you literally go out of your way to focus on protein, hit a protein goal, and then sort of stay under a carb and fat limit. And I think that approach is really effective and it's really practical. And in terms of how you get started, that's exactly how you do it. You know, every time you eat, you're like, okay, where's the protein? What's my protein? You center everything around protein. 
And then you just shave down the carbs and fats to kind of hit your goals, you know, and, and, and that's my big picture take on it. And that's really the whole PE diet concept in a nutshell. Yeah, I think uh, to kind of give a little bit of a story about what you described, Dr. Naaman, I remember when I was in high school, I worked at McDonald's for a couple of years. And when the first summer I was there, I couldn't figure out why they were so strict about not kind of using the cups like like they have, you know, they give you those like plastic paper cups and they'd get so mad when like the workers would use multiple of those versus like either saving them or bringing your own. They did not care how much soda or whatever it is you drank from the fountain thing. And eventually I got around to asking and they said, well, that cup costs way more than even the, you know, like five or six refills in it. So they're like, we really don't care if you drink soda all day long, because at most you might cost our company like 50 cents if you're just guzzling it all day long. But if you're throwing away those cups all the time, that's what actually costs the money. So it's like that cheap just refined carbohydrate source. I mean, I could easily drink probably a thousand calories worth of soda in a ship if I wanted to. And, you know, no one was going to care because it probably cost five cents for me to do that. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's, oh, go ahead. That's a good point. Uh, though. Yeah. I was going to say, it's really interesting too. like having worked as a clinical dietitian for so many years, um, protein specifically animal protein has really been demonized as this like, I've, I can't tell you how many patients will tell me like, yes, I eat my whole grain pasta instead of, you know, beef, you know, when they're telling me this, oh, I don't eat red meat, red meat's bad for you. Oh, I only eat lean chicken. I only, and my experience is when people remove protein from their diet, when they say, okay, I'm not going to eat, you know, you know, steak or whatever, they 99% of the time are adding refined carbohydrates. And I've, in my personal opinion, it sounds like as well as yours, that's the worst thing you can possibly do. And it's amazing, you know, I, when I first transitioned, you know, to a really, really a high, um, I went completely carnivore for a month. I had my, you know, my health was failing. I couldn't run anymore. I was just, I was eating, this would terrify your doctor name. I was eating over 400 grams of carbohydrates a day. I was just, my health was a mess. I was afraid. I was afraid that if I ate a ton of protein that, you know, I was going to be sick, but I had tried the opposite and it didn't work. And within weeks, my health completely transformed of just eating.